Over the next few videos, we're going to be talking about the way that energy and matter transfer through ecosystems, and especially energy. But whenever you have transfers of energy in ecosystems, you're also going to have transfers of matter because uh, energy in ecosystems travels through organic compounds like sugar that are generated by the autotrophs at the first levels, at the primary production level of the food web. We'll talk more about that in a second. But before we do talk about any of that stuff, if you're talking about energy transfers, it's good to remind you of the theories of thermodynamics and the laws or the statements of uh, almost unvariable fat that those theories come with. Now, there are three actual laws of thermodynamics to know about, but only two really pertain to this, so I'm going to review those two. The first is called conservation of mass or energy, and the second one is the law of entropy. Now, conservation of mass has to do with that idea that if you have a certain uh, amount of stuff or either energy or matter at the beginning of a chemical reaction or the beginning of a phenomena, at the end of the phenomena, the amount has to be the same, the total amount has to be the same. Now, that could be changes in the organization of matter or changes in the type of energy that you're talking about, but the amount of matter or the amount of energy needs to stay the same. And even in nuclear reactions where some of the matter uh, becomes energy, it still follows the law of thermodynamics and some of the uh, and the laws of relativity when it comes to determine how much matter becomes energy and so forth. So matter and energy are conserved throughout the universe, and that's a very important uh, principle. Now remember that when we talk about the nature of science, I mentioned that there are exceptions for these rules. Uh, things are like the early universe or the Big Bang or the black holes and things like that. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about ecology. So the, for the purpose of what we're talking about, it's important for you to know these two laws. So for example, you see here on the top that you have a chemical reaction taking place. And that in that chemical reaction, um, you're combining two different kinds of compounds. And when you do that, um, they change into different compounds. So you see you had CaCl and then you had Na2SO4. But at the end of the chemical reaction, you have CaCO4 and NaCl. So you, what, what you did is that you did a double substitution. You know, you did a, a, a switcheroo with the, with the atoms on these, on these compounds. But notice that the total amount of matter that was available in the first time and matter in the second time are equivalent, which means that you have uh, still matter has been conserved. Now, sometimes you would do something like that, and it would seem like the matter was not conserved, but maybe because you kept the system open, remember open system allows matter out, and then it seemed like the matter went down. But in reality, uh, it didn't. It's just because of maybe some vapor escaped into the atmosphere, and then the numbers went down a bit. So open systems will seem to be losing matter, but it, they're not. The matter is just being transferred to a different system. Matter is never destroyed. The same thing is true about energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Uh, it, whatever energy you have at the beginning, you will have at the end. So, for example, uh, when you have a roller coaster uh, and you add potential energy to the roller coaster cart by, by wheeling him out to the top of the mount, as the roller coaster goes down the mountain, that's the conservation of energy is what powers the whole, whole shenanigans. Because what's happening there is that when you're going down the hill, the kinetic energy that's um, being gained as you go downhill is coming from the potential energy that's being lost because up here you have the highest amount of potential energy. Down at the bottom of the hill you have the highest amount of kinetic energy. But then all this kinetic energy is used to generate new potential and so forth. And that's how it kind of works. And so the roller coaster keeps going. But remember that while this is happening, some of the energy that we used to be the original potential energy is being transferred into different kinds of energy, like heat and sound, well, because of the friction that's happening with the uh, roller coaster. In fact, modern roller coasters have try to avoid the friction as much as possible so they can get the ride going as, as long as possible. Now, this, this process is also an example of entropy if you think about it because entropy is a word in science that means disorder now if you think about the roller coaster and the fact that the original potential that it had eventually runs out or it seems because the roller coaster can't go on forever and the hills become lower and lower as it goes along and eventually it just kinda has to stop right what's happening there is that the potential energy is not being lost 
it, but it's being converted to other kinds of energy. And as it goes along, each time the, the, the roller coaster goes up and down, some of the energy is being transferred to less useful types of energy, like heat and sound, which cannot be captured to continue the, the propagation of the roller coaster. So that's another important concept. It's the idea of entropy, that throughout time, energy tends to be more disorganized. The second law of thermodynamics says that uh, the total entropy of any system tends to increase with time. So in the universe, energy tends to be dispersed or disorganized. Originally, all the energy was together at one point. But as the Big Bang happens, and it's still happening, what's happening? The universe is expanding. So just like a material that's solid, it tends to become liquid and then a gas as, as, as it absorbs energy and expands. Uh, like it's easier if you just throw a bunch of bricks for the bricks to form in a disorganized pattern than it is for them to chaotically and randomly organize in, in a, a nice little pile. Like if you put a, a bunch of atoms all together into a little corner of a room, they will tend to sp spread out. Just like in your house, uh, your room, it, you organize it one day and less than a week later, it's completely disorganized again. But of course, it took energy for that to happen and some of the energy got lost, or not lost, actually transferred to less useful types of energy such as heat. Now, these things will be important in biology because it's going to be part of what's happening in living systems. In living systems, matter is constantly transferred from one uh, organism to another and even sometimes from an ecosystem to another within the biosphere. Likewise, energy flows through ecosystems from one uh, animal to another and so forth. But as animals use up that energy, some of the energy gets conver converted from one form to another. For example, originally the energy is in the solar energy, but then that energy gets captured into sugar. But not all of the energy, some of the energy is lost as heat. Not lost as in that it goes nowhere, it disappears, but it becomes less useful as heat. But, and then some of the energy does get trapped into sugar, but then when somebody eats and burns that sugar through cell respiration, some of the energy again is wasted as heat. So whatever you do in energy transfer, some of it always gets lost. You know, ever played that game, telephone, where you talk to somebody in the ear, and then uh, that, that message, by the time it gets to the end of it, is completely corrupted, you know? And the idea there is that with every transfer of energy or information, some of it gets disorganized. That's entropy, and that's the second law of thermodynamics. To gather the laws of thermodynamics, explain the way the matter and energy uh, work through ecosystems as well as organisms in, on Earth. The matter can be transferred from organism to organism, but it must be conserved, and if something seems to be missing, it probably either went to another system or got converted into energy if a nuclear reaction took place. And that energy also gets transferred and always, all of the energy that was inputted goes somewhere. Now, most of the time, the energy may end up in a different form. It may change from one form to another, but ultimately, all of the energy has to be accounted for. And that this energy, as it gets transferred from one form to the other, some of it gets disorganized or less useful kinds of energy. And that means that the entropy of the system increases with time. And we'll talk about in the year several examples of this happening in biology uh, and throughout ecosystems and over the next few videos that's going to be an integral concept that's going to govern the way that the food web and food chain works and so we have to talk about it i'll see you guys in those videos